Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen welcome to the second part of our unit 1 of the productions and operations management course we will continue to understand the fundamental concepts of operations management in the last session we studied the role of operations management in businesses both manufacturing and service organization we also looked at the 10 critical areas in production and operations management our agenda for this session is emergence of operations management as a discipline, emerging challenges for operations managers, significance of service sector and the conclusions. With this brief introduction, I will request Dr. Abbas to advance our understandings on these topics. Well, thank you Aisha. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you as students of management science I'm sure have some understanding and some reading about the history of technological development. Myself as a student and instructor of management science have studied the history of industrial revolution and the development of management thought over the years and that has simply fascinated me. The industrial revolution has March to a great extent. I myself have seen, uh, I have not seen the birth of the uh, information technology revolution, but I have seen the boom of IT revolution. And industrial uh, revolution and operations management have advanced in bits and pieces. There is a very uh, fascinating uh, statement which comes from James Martin the author of The Meaning of 21st Century, A Vital Blueprint for Ensuring Our Survival. He says, the past 50 years have probably seen more changes than the previous 500 years. And those 500 witnessed more advances than the previous 5,000. It seems the industrial revolution or the industrial de development and the technological development and the development of management thought has a sort of exponentially progress and uh, there is no uh, I, I would say in operations management it is also the case I will briefly look at some of the historical events that took place during the last 150 years and which can be treated as precursors to uh, as operations management we see it today uh, for example in a division of labor the concept was given by the famous economist Adam Smith and Charles Babbage. The standardization of parts concept was uh, advanced by Ali Whitney. Scientific management of Taylor, coordinated assembly line concept uh, associated with Ford, Henry Ford and Sorensen. Then Gantt chart was uh, were developed by Gantt, time and motion studies by the famous uh, husband wife Frank and Lillian Gilbreth, quality control concepts which were uh, given by Shiva and Edward Deming. John Ettensoff and uh, Clifford Berry, they actually uh, developed the first digital computer and that was marvelous. In fact, the, the invention of computer and application of information technology in the production environment and overall in businesses, I think 
that further accelerated the pace with which uh, operational management uh, uh, moved forward. These are some of the, the developments which took part not at once but over a period of time. Similarly, flexible manufacturing system in which you can vary the product, you can vary the process, you can vary the speed, you can vary, uh, it means you can manage, uh, uh, there, there's a lot of flexibility in the manufacturing process. We'll study that uh, concept in detail in our uh, uh, next sessions. The, the quality awards introduced uh, by Ballridge in 80s, computer integrated manufacturing. Now, we used to use computer as tools. Now, computers have been integrated in the production process itself what we call computer integrated manufacturing. And in the 90s, the, the, the advent of, uh, I would say, internet has unleashed yet another era uh, of uh, globalization in which it is not the local production, it is not the national production. The global uh, partners and players, they are integrated in much bigger systems uh, for the sake of efficiency improvements and productivity improvements in, product, uh, in operations management. And as we know, internet has revolutionized the world. Sir, would you describe the work of some of the veteran practitioners in operations management? Oh, sure. Uh, I think uh, all of these uh, uh, things which I mentioned briefly as the heritage, uh, how the operations management thought has evolved, I'll, I'll give you some examples. Now, I mentioned Ali Whitney, uh, who basically uh, received a contract uh, from the government to build 10,000 muskets. And uh, he came up with the, I mean, means you know uh, when you do something with hand, you cannot have a precisely same part with the same specifications. Each part you produce by hand will be uh, of a little bit of different sp uh, specifications. Mm -hmm. Now, the point is, Ali Whitney came up with the concept that there should be some standardized part. He showed uh, that machine tools could make standardized part to exact specification, okay? Once a part is uh, built or part is manufactured, that part could be used to masquette one, masquette two, masquette three, or masquette four. Uh, I think that was something uh, great uh, because of the use of the machine tool, uh, the production of standardized part was a, a, a great advancement. Similarly, Frederick Taylor, who is also known as the uh, father of scientific management, uh, he was chief engineer at Midwell uh, Steel. He studied how the work is actually done. And he began first motion and time studies along with his uh, colleagues. And uh, he is also credited with uh, the, the, the management uh, concepts which are uh, termed as the uh, Taylor principles. He created efficiency principles which were later uh, known as uh, Taylor principles. Uh, according to Taylor, uh, he put a lot of uh, emphasis on management and he says matching employees to the right job it means not everybody could do every job uh, very competently it means certain specific person who is trained educated who has background to do something can do the job very effectively similarly uh, he uh, advanced the concept of providing the proper training in fact before you put somebody to do some work he or she should be given appropriate training for that. Then he advanced another concept of providing proper work methods and tools. Means if you do something, let's say you want to produce this uh, uh, mouse, there is a specific process to produce this mouse. And if this process is documented, and then this process is repeated in its production, uh, the uh, uh, Taylor principle says that will enhance productivity and the quality. And he uh, gave yet another concept establishing legitimate incentives for work to be accomplished. That is, I would say, the behavior science. He not only uh, uh, brought in the scientific principles in doing things scientifically, he also brought the concept of behavioralism also in the management science. Then uh, Frank and Leland Galbraith, we mentioned, uh, these were husband and wife, they developed work measurement methods. I mean, uh, they say, that if your job environment is appropriately crafted uh, or by crafting your job environment appropriately, you can improve productivity. For example, uh, if this mouse is not attached at this place, it is attached this way uh, on, 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 on my left. 
it will be difficult for me for example having uh, the the port here it is easier to connect the mouse this side if this port is this side i think it will uh, not be efficient you will require a longer cord and so on the allen and uh, uh, lelian gilbreth these uh, this couple brought efficiency methods in the production environment and uh, i think they were very famous and uh, there were two books written and on these books some movies were also developed these are very fantastic cheaper by the dozen and then another book was uh, bells on their toes i'll strongly urge our students if you can get hold of these thing you must look at that these are fascinating to watch then henry ford i'm sure uh, uh, you have heard uh, aisha and our students you have heard uh, the concept of assembly line it was henry ford uh, who uh, started ford motor company uh, and then he and one of his uh, colleague sorensen they developed the concept of assembly line as we know in assembly line the uh, the the part manufactured or let's say a, a car manufactured the car chassis moves against various work stations as the chassis moves at various various work stations workers perform on that at the end of the assembly line actually your car is complete in all respects so assembly line concept was uh, given uh, by henry ford in which unfinished products moved by the conveyor past the work work station and it was a fantastic uh, it, it it is written in the literature that sorensen would tie uh, a chases chases of the car and will pull by himself across the work stations uh, that is very fantastic and then because of the efficiency principles they brought on the concept of fair wage for the fair job since the workers working at the uh, ford motor company uh, in michigan they were very well trained well educated and they were well paid as well five dollars a day in 1911 that was a lot uh, and again henry ford is, and his colleagues at ford, ford motor company are credited with efficiency principles in operation management then edward deming uh, you know uh, before the second world war japanese products were synonym for inferior quality means whatever was made in japan was considered as of inferior quality it was edward deming who brought the quality principles and statistical process control in the manufacturing sector in japan and rightly he is credited with teaching japan quality control methods in post world war 2 uh and one more thing which edward deming came up with was that he brought that workers should also be involved in the production process in the decision making workers should not only do job a or job b they should also be whatever happens at the shop floor they should be involved in the decision making process as well so it seems like a number of academic disciplines have uh, influenced the operations management yes uh, it is true uh, operations management uh, as we see today it involves almost all disciplines of uh, natural and physical sciences means human factors means how get a job gets done means if a person is comfortable in a working environment then his efficiency will be more if a person is not uh, comfortable if the working environment is not comfort com comfortable obviously his or her efficiency will drop as such human factor and then lots of industrial engineering uh, concepts management science concept planning organizing coordination communication and control then biological sciences how a human being uh, or uh, a process takes place in a certain uh, setting physical sciences information technology we have seen all these disciplines human factors industrial engineering management science biological sciences natural sciences physical sciences information technology computers electronics all these contributed in one way or the other uh, in the advancement of uh, uh, operation management as a discipline uh, and these advancements have also created some challenges means operations management was uh, as a discipline was considered certain core principles were there now because of 
the, the advancements, the, these concepts have changed a lot. For example, uh, as we see, the production used to be local or a national focus. Means if, if, if a factory is there and factory produces something, it is mostly produced in a district or in a province or in some local area and certainly not beyond boundaries means production was uh, at the most the national affair but now it has changed to a global focus I mean let's say Toyota Toyota Motor Company in Islamabad uh, in, in Karachi will be getting parts maybe from Hong Kong will be getting parts from uh, uh, from Bangkok Singapore or, and and so on an engine may be coming from Japan or from Malaysia and certain parts uh, let's say coming from uh, from China means it is not a national affair now the manufacturing and similarly it is true for services it had become a global focus it's not a local focus it's a global focus similarly job specialization there used to be a person can do one specific job now no, it is not true. It is empowered employees and teams. It's not one person. It is not a single-handed affair. It is essentially the, the, the teamwork, which uh, operations management uh, professionals say that adds efficiency, that adds productivity, that adds economies uh, in uh, your, your uh, goods manufacturing or service operations. Sir, in the first session, you briefly described that uh, operations management is applicable to services organization. We would like to know more about the differences between the manufacturing and service organizations as well as the significance of operations management for services. Well, Aisha, it is, it is very important for operations management student, for management science student who study operations management, it is extremely important for them to understand the difference between what actually goods are and what actually services are because it has a strong relationship with the with the profitability of a corporation i'll i'll uh, give some characteristics of goods and characteristics of services and then i'll compare uh, 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 char char these characteristics of goods with the characteristics of services for example goods are tangible products this computer is a good this glass is a good. This rostrum is a good, tangible product. Consistent product definition, okay? You produce a computer, the second laptop will be of similar specifications and same shape, third will be of similar shape. Consistent product definition. Then product usually separate from consumption. Means this was, this was produced probably in China or in Japan or somewhere else, but I'm using it here in Pakistan can be uh, inventoried, means you can inventory 10 computer, 20 computer, 100 computers, you can keep them and low customer interaction. While this thing is produced, customer is not in picture, it is manufactured in a factory. Right? These are some of the characteristics of goods. Now, for the services, in services it is intangible projects, uh, products, means you go to the doctor, doctor uh, let's say to a dentist a dentist will look at uh, your your teeth, teeth formation provide your service there okay intangible he won't give you something mm -hmm. I means that that is basically a service similarly uh, 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 let's say we are teaching here this is we are not handing over any product to somebody it is essentially a service then pro produced and consumed at the same time in order to get a service from a hospital or from a doctor, you will be there and you will be provided the service then and there, right? Often unique. I means let's say a dentist provides services to n number of patients and each patient will have a separate specifically crafted service for him or her. Then high customer interaction in services, you can produce a service when the customer is not there. I mean, it's mostly customer uh, interaction, inconsistent product definition means whatever service you go to a bank you go to an airline you want to travel to uh, let's say New York or you want to travel to Tokyo means for each uh, a product uh, I mean means the service you get from the airline or another person uh, gets a service from the airline going to Tokyo or going to uh, New York 
will be entirely different, crafted to the service needs of the user. Then often knowledge based it means nobody else could uh, fix your teeth or no other doctor can look at a certain specific uh, ailment. It is knowledge intensive. I mean, it means not everybody could teach operations management. I mean, the person who is educated, has studied it as a subject and taught it as a subject can teach operations management, often knowledge based. Then frequently dispersed. These are some of the characteristics of services. Then uh, if we uh, 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 let's say attributes of goods which are tangible products and attribute of services which are intangible product if we compare them we see can be resold goods can be resold you produce one you buy it you can resell it reselling is unusual in services can be inventoried goods difficult to inventory some aspects of quality is measurable whereas in services quality is difficult to measure Selling is distinct from the production. I mean, computer or car or ship is produced somewhere else, but sold at a different place. Whereas selling is a part of the service. Similarly, product is transportable. I mean, you move a computer or a camera at place A or place B, whereas uh, you cannot move a service from place A to place B. Site of facility is important for cost site of facility important for customer contact. Similarly, often easy to automate production of goods, often difficult to automate. Then revenue generated primarily from tangible products, a revenue generated primarily from the intangible services. These are some of the attribute differences of goods and services. Here you see, uh, you know, uh, in the last session we discussed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that pure goods and pure services, it is getting difficult every day to distinguish between what are your pure products and what are your pure services. As we see in this chart, we see automobile, for example, fits in the definition of pure goods, 100%. Then computer, 75%. These, these percentages are just arbitrary, right? And I mean, it's a domain automobile domain from 100% product moves in towards the service element. Installed carpeting, fast food meals, restaurant meal auto repair, hospital care, advertising agency investment management, consulting service, teaching, counseling. We see these are, for example, counseling is a pure service, 100% pure service, whereas the automobile manufacturing probably is a 100% pure product. Now, since there is an element of service as well in automobile, in computers, in installed carpeting, but the dominant role is of goods. Whereas in counseling, teaching, uh, medical service, hospital care, the dominant role is of uh, services. It means the, the goods and services, essentially they overlap. Sir, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. As operations managers, uh, do we need to concentrate more on goods or on services? I think it, it depends, uh, Aisha, on the nature of business you are. Services are very, very important. Goods are equally important too. Uh, but it depends if your business is dominated by the manufacturing activity, certainly you'll, uh, you'll be putting more effort on goods. But if, let's say, you are a consulting organization, you will be focusing more on the service end of it. Uh, this chart, as we see, uh, the industry and services as a percent of GDP uh, in various countries. We see uh, in Australia, the services are some about 30 percent of GDP, whereas uh, the, the industry is some 70 percent of GDP. In China, for example, the services are about 50 percent, we see and manufacturing is uh, about 40% uh, or so. It means if in an economy, you can, you can replicate the same thing for your business. If your business is more service oriented, you would like to have more focus on service. If your business is more uh, manufacturing like, you will have to focus more on, uh, on, on, on the product. As such, 
I would say to answer your question, it is very, very important to really analyze your business and then come up with what actually, uh, how much focus you should be putting. Both are important. Uh, I would like to uh, show you, for example, you see, the manufacturing employment is decreasing, whereas the service employment is increasing. Uh, in this chart we see, although the manufacturing employment in previous we saw is decreasing, but industrial production is increasing. Why? It is because of the increase in productivity. Similarly, uh, I'll, I'll give you some examples of uh, uh, in each sector, for example, manufacturing as well as in uh, service sector. In service sector, education, legal, medical and others, they are services. Trade, retail, wholesale, services. Utilities, transportation, services. And there are a number of organizations. Well, ladies and gentlemen and students, uh, these, uh, the examples of the businesses or name of businesses, uh, in, if they are multinationals, will be known to you. However, you can, you can fill in the examples from your own environment. Uh, professional and business services. There are some examples. Finance, information and real estate. For example, Citicorp, American Express, Prudential, Aetna and so on. You add your bank here, Habib Bank or Bank of uh, Bengal or Bank of Bangladesh and so on. Food, lodging, entertainment. Again, these are services. Public administration, services. Now, in manufacturing, General Electric, Ford, Toyota, Honda, Rolls-Royce, Boeing, Construction, Bechtel, McDermott, in agriculture, King Ranch, Archer Daniel, Midland, Cargill, in mining. These are all, uh, for example, some of the examples of a manufacturing sector. We see services are 78% of the employment, manufacturing 21.4%. Of the total Sir, required. we have seen that uh, production and operations management has evolved over uh, a long period and is continuing to do so. We would like to know how the future looks like. Absolutely bright, very bright. Because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain that with the causes why the future I see is bright. In this uh, diagram, we see past and cause and future. Past was local or national focus. Now, reliable worldwide communication. I'm sure every person, almost every, uh, carries a, a laptop or uh, carries a mobile phone. I mean, communication had, uh, I would call it communication revolution. And that communication revolution, internet, communication revolution, transportation network. You want to travel to uh, one country to other, in few hours you get there. Uh, strain uh, 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 run across continents and so on. The cause is global focus moving production off offshore. That is that that gives uh, an indication that operation management has a bright future. Then uh, again, lengthy product development because of a number of reasons: short life cycle, internet, rapid international communication, computer aided design, and international collaboration rapid product development. Standardized product had gone to mass customization. Job specialization has gone to employed, uh, empowered employees. Future of operations management is fantastic and bright. To cap my discussion, I would say the global focus, just-in-time performance, supply chain partnering, a rapid product development, mass customization, empowered employees, and environmentally sensitive production, and ethical issues. These are some of the hallmarks of new trends in production and operations management. Thank you very much, sir, for giving our students a very detailed discussion on the emergence of operations management discipline, explaining manufacturing and service businesses and their characteristics, and changing nature of the business landscape and triggering our thoughts about what to expect in future as operations manager. In summary, operations management as a discipline has progressed steadily, new tools, techniques, processes, procedures, methods and mechanisms evolved and still continue to do so. Operations management is as important for services business as for manufacturing operations. 
Number of physical and natural science has helped us in operations management and it seems will continue to do so for foreseeable future. Operations management discipline has a bright future as the global competition stiffens and organizations are always in search for productivity enhancements method which operations management provides. With these concluding thoughts, our unit 1 completes. We will see you with unit 2 in our next session. Thank you and Allah Hafiz.